experience with Maserati's Grand Cabrio models, and the exclusive electric Maserati boat. The invitation promised an exhilarating experience with both the electric 2025 Maserati Grand Cabrio Falgor and the gas-powered Grand Cabrio Trofeo convertibles. However, the real allure for me, a true lake enthusiast, was the opportunity to pilot the electric Maserati boat. Maserati spokesperson Matt Rindone assured me over the phone that I could drive the $2.6 million electric Maserati Tridente boat, just fly to Italy, test drive some cars, and captain the boat. I was sold. I should have gotten written confirmation that I could drive the boat. Instead, weeks later, I found myself enjoying a day cruising through the Italian countryside in both the electric and gas-powered versions of the new Maserati Gran Cabrio. Both cars are exhilarating and perfectly embody what Maserati stands for today and what it is evolving towards in the future. However, it's the electric Falgor that truly stands out. Maserati has managed to make this convertible Grand Tour quicker and smoother without compromising the driving experience. There's even a distinctive noise, albeit of a different kind. Welcome to the era of the electric convertible. Maserati Grand Cabrio Falgor impresses, while the Trofeo thrills. After energizing myself with a few cappuccinos, I settled behind the wheel of an orange Grand Cabrio Falgor. My eyes immediately caught the blue start button on the steering wheel, charmed. I cautiously navigated out of a narrow alley, holding my breath. This beast requires 41 feet to complete a turn. Maserati's reason for this? It's complicated. I could handle a detailed explanation, I promise. On the road, the three 300 kilowatts, 402 horsepower, electric motors, one up front and two at the rear, combined to deliver 760 horsepower, propelling this 5,249 pound marble from 0 to 60 miles per hour in 2.8 seconds. That's just 0.1 seconds slower than the electric Gran Turismo Coupe. The 92.5 kilowatt hour, 83.0 kilowatt hours usable, T-shaped battery, housed in the driveline tunnel and behind the rear seats, powers these motors. Currently, power output is limited due to the inverters. These motors can potentially deliver a combined output of 1,200 horsepower, hinting at future upgrades. Maserati's involvement in Formula E isn't coincidental. We didn't get to charge the Falgor or deplete its battery entirely. Its 800-volt electrical architecture purportedly enables fast charging from 20% to 80% in 18 minutes, adding 48 miles of range in 5 minutes. Although official EPA range ratings are pending, Maserati anticipates the Gran Cabrio Falgor to offer approximately 250 miles of range. Once we left the town, the road began to twist. Maserati's lead technician for the program, Filippo Pensati, was just ahead of me in a red Gran Turismo Trofeo Coupe. I had the Falgor set to max range mode, which dampened the thrill. Switching to GT mode improved things, but the powertrain still felt restrained until I turned the steering wheel mounted dial to sport mode. The powertrain's potential was unleashed. The red Gran Turismo took a corner and sped down a straightaway, but the Falgor effortlessly kept pace. Flicking the drive mode selector knob to Corsa mode firmed up the suspension further and the air springs lowered the car. Too low. Under compression from the sharp turns, I now scraped the underside of the front bumper. So back to sport mode I went. The two electric motors in the rear enable torque vectoring to shift the power side to side while going around a corner. Unless someone, possibly me, went faster than they should on a public road, it's transparent and can't be felt. Blasting through the rock-walled canyons in the hills of Italy, the Falgor wasn't completely silent, but it didn't roar like Maserati's of yore. A synthesized sound from the inverter and electric motors rocks throughout the cabin. It's a mechanical sound that has a faint hint of gear whine with a bit of grit to it, as if you're hearing the actual electric motor windings spin up and down. It's just enough to give the impression you're accelerating and decelerating without feeling completely fake. I liked it. Gran Cabrio can cruise or blast. Maserati's team said the point of the Gran Cabrio is that it could be driven from northern Italy to northern Germany in comfort and style, but stop off at the Nürburgring for a hot lap. In a theoretical situation that someone found themselves going at ring-lapping speeds, the Maserati team isn't wrong. In Corsa mode a battery temp graph on the right side of the digital gauge cluster keeps tabs on the power source. 
Should too much heat get put in the pack with repeated hard acceleration runs and or from hard braking, which regenerates energy into the battery pack, the car will limit power until the system cools down. But outside of the Autobahn or a race track it's hard to see a situation when this could occur without someone going to jail. Theoretically, those brakes have four levels of reg and ranging from maximum D equals, double minus, to D plus all controlled by the metal column mounted paddles. The latter mode removes all regen and allows sailing with no slowing down unless the driver hits the brakes. The former induces the most regen, but it's still not enough for one pedal driving. I found D to be most similar to engine braking, but used D equals most of the day as it sheds speed more quickly, fed energy back into the battery pack, and still felt predictable in a way Mercedes EQ team hasn't figured out yet with its regenerative braking system. Sliding out of the Falgor into the gas-powered Trofeo wasn't as dramatic a change as one might expect. The Trofeo's 3.0-liter twin-turbo V, 6 grinds 542 horsepower and 479 lbft of torque into the pavement. With a 0 to 60 miles per hour sprint of 3.4 seconds it's noticeably slower than the Falgor. It can't push the small of my back into the seat as roughly as the Falgor. It needs to interrupt power for the 8-speed automatic transmission to shift, too. The Trofeo crackles under hard acceleration with the active exhaust valves open. It sounds good for AV, 6, and tunnel runs induce big smiles. But the ride is the most vivid difference between the Gran Cabrio Falgor and Trofeo. The Falgor weighs 933 pounds more than the Trofeo. That heft can be felt around a corner with the Trofeo rotating more quickly, but the extra weight settles the Gran Cabrio's ride. Even at high speeds in Corsa mode, the suspension settles easily over undulating pavement in the Falgor whereas the Trofeo can feel firm, even a little nervous. With the soft top down there's not a lot of wind swirling around the cabin, even at highway speed. Two people can talk and hear each other easily. Putting the top up hushes the cabin to a coupe-like degree. Maserati Gran Cabrio Falgor dresses the part. Both the gas Trofeo and electric Falgor slink down the road with a long hood, short rear deck, swollen fenders, and a low ride height. Regardless of powertrain, the car wears fender vents like cufflinks. The distinct giveaway of what's powering the electric Falgor versus the gas-powered Trofeo are the staggered 20-inch front and 21-inch rear wheel designs, a lack of air intakes on the front bumper, a charge port door on the driver's side of the rear bumper, and the lack of exhaust tips. The Falgor's wheel design looks better than the Trofeo's with a three-spoke-like treatment. If you squint the wheels look like they are throwing three tridents as they spin. They almost remind me of a classier iteration of the first-gen Dodge Viper's three-spoke alloys, though I'm guessing that wasn't the inspiration for head of Maserati design Klaus Bussy. Maserati Gran Cabrio's interior goes digital. Regardless of powertrain the Gran Cabrio has the same interior as the coupe.